Hey, thanks for watching. This video is done by two of the best minds in the industry, Neil Comparetto and John Semelhack. Neil Comparetto is co-owner of Comparetto Comfort Solutions in Virginia, along with John Semelhack from Think Little. John is a uh, excellent and very innovative designer in the HVAC industry, and they are doing a testing on a new home, new construction home. Neil did the install, John did the design, and so they're doing the test out, and they're going to show you a couple different things. They're going to be doing a duct leakage test um, to show how tight you can make a duct system and why that's important. They're also going to be showing a really innovative design that they have, and that is to use an ERV in order to exhaust air from the bathrooms and at the same time bring in ventilation air in order to create balanced ventilation. But rather than doing that with traditional bath fans, you're doing that through an ERV, which exchanges that heat and moisture from the outgoing airstream to the new ingoing airstream. I think it's a brilliant way of doing it. One thing I want you to notice here is they are using some materials that traditionally technically technicians might poo poo like flex duct. And I like it because what they're doing is they're showing that you don't have to go crazy with using uh, very expensive and time consuming materials. It does come down to the way that you install it. That's what matters more. And by the time they get done with their testing, uh, you really can't dispute their results. And that's what I like about them. Not only do they design systems that are practical and that do the job that they're supposed to do, but they are testing them on the way out. So I hope you enjoy. Thank you to Neil Comparetto and John Semelhack. Take it away, guys. Let's take a look at the plans. What we have is a 3,000 square foot house. It's single story. It has a conditioned crawl space where the equipment is and a conditioned attic. It's being served by two ducted one ton mini split heat pumps. As you can see, the duct system is pretty simple. The supply is in blue. We have a short plenum and then branch lines run out to each of the register boots. These are done mostly in flex. All turns are in rigid, but straight lines in flex. We have a central return for each system. And then we have undercut doorways to provide a return air path back to the equipment. And this shows the ERV, which is how we are ventilating this house. It is a completely independent duct system. The green represents the fresh air. So we have fresh air going to each of the bedrooms as well as fresh air coming from outside. And the yellow is the exhaust duct, which each bathroom is being exhausted. And also the kitchen, which is not shown on here. This is designed to run 24 seven. So we are constantly providing fresh air to the living space as well as removing stale air from the bathrooms. Just to start out, so we're, we're doing a duct leakage test. Gone ahead and taped off all the grills. Are we pressurizing? We are pressurizing. Okay, we're, uh, we're, uh, we're pressurizing the duct system. I'm gonna attempt to do ring four. We have the, the uh, ring four on the duct blaster, which is a little bit of a different process than usual where we would depressurize the system and this would give us a direct readout. So this blue line right here is actually inserted into one of the supply registers. So what we are doing is differential pressure gauge has two channels. So channel A, my left side, is measuring the pressure in the duct, which is the blue hose with respect to the room pressure. And then the right side is measuring the pressure difference across the fan opening. There's a hose connected to the, not connected to the fan opening right now. Because we're on ring four. Ring four, uh, almost nobody in the world gets to use ring four, because this is only for measuring duct leakage under 10 CFM. So we're, we're hoping we get there. We don't know yet. It's going to be close. If we don't get it, I'm going to blame the equipment, no, FYI. We're, we're already there. We're there? Yeah, because I tested on ring three already. Oh, you, you tricked me. So I've got the gauge set up now to do 10 second rolling averages. And we try to get the duct pressure as close as we can to exactly 25 pascals with respect to the house which is really hard to get it perfect. So the pressure drop across the opening is 42.2, which gives us a reading somewhere between 6.8 and 7.2 cubic feet per minute. Not bad, I'll take it. So we'll just, uh, we'll just mark that up here for you. Pretty tight. That's it for this one? That's it for this one, yep. Cool, all right, we have one more to test.
So we're on uh, the second heat pump system for this house, and we're still on ring four duct tightness testing kit. At 25 pascals, we're reading 18.2 uh, pascals of pressure difference, which gives us about 4.6 CFM. A little less than five, let's call it. That's uh, our best yet, so I'm happy with that. Now, just to be clear, this is an actual duct system. This, this portion uh, is it roughly covering 1,500 square feet. It's a one-ton unit, so there is a uh, know, six, eight plies of return. It's not just, we're not cheating. It is a duct system. So this is our ERV right here. This is handling the ventilation for the whole house. It's ventilating the kitchen, which has a recirculating hood, and all the bathrooms, and we're delivering fresh air to all the living space, to the bedrooms and the living room. ERV stands for Energy Recovery Ventilator. This is a construction site, so. <laughs> so this is the Renew Air EV90P. We like the Renew Air units uh, quite a bit for their combination of price, simplicity, and performance. Very easy to work on, which is nice. We have MERV-8 filtration here. This is the energy recovery core. And what we're going to be doing now is balancing the airflow between the outside airstream and the exhaust airstream. And what the manufacturer has done is put in pressure ports to measure the pressure drop across the core. And they provide it, provide it to calculate the airflow at different pressure drops. So we're gonna let these Fan motors get up to speed, and then we'll go ahead and measure. Oh, so door switch, that makes sense. And some of the things that Neil has done, we've specified. We have vibration, isolation material here. We have these pretty sexy silencers from Fantech that do a great job reducing airflow noise that gets delivered to the rooms. We've done some put some flex stuff in place just to isolate the equipment from the ducts because the ducts are attached to the structure. So, you know, we do the best we can to uh, minimize noise and vibration. We also ran some flex ducts. So we have essentially the, this is the exhaust and the fresh air, they're metal trunk lines, and then we have flex duct runouts from there to, again, to quiet it down. So. So what we're doing now with the, the manometer is we're measuring, we're on our outside air, our supply air stream, measuring across the core, the pressure drop. And this is, the supply side is moving just a little bit less air. So this is a very simple ERV, single speed motors, no fan motor adjustment with the setup. There's no controls, it's just on or off. So what we do is we adjust the airflow with dampers. So we figure out which airstream is lower. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now what we're going to do is measure the airflow in the two airstreams, the outside air and the exhaust airstream, and then we're going to balance the airflows as close as we can, try to get them perfect if we can. So this is a very simple machine, just single speed motors, no individual fan motor adjustment. So the way that we balance this is we figure out which side is lower airflow, and then we use the dampers to restrict the high side a little bit and bring that airflow down in line with the lower side. So right now we're measuring the airflow on the outside airstream, and we're at 0.19 and change into the water, water column. And then we're gonna go, that we have already tested this out and we know that that is the lower side. So I'm just gonna reset this gauge and see where we are on the exhaust side. We'll get a 10 second average here. Okay, so we're at 0.21. Basically we're about 10 CFM off in terms of the balance. And we've got our damper here. And we're just going to adjust that until we get down to the 195 range. So John, you're setting this up as balanced um, airflow. The exhaust and the fresh air will be equal. That's right. 
So the, the, there are some people uh, do it differently. This could be set up to provide positive pressure or negative pressure as well. So it could be balanced, positive, negative. Most of the time we do it balanced. Sometimes we do it positive. Right. Um, we have an upcoming project that has a wood stove and that one will set up the ERV to be slightly positive in order to encourage draft up the flue and lessen the risk of carbon monoxide poisoning. This house doesn't have that though, so we're just going to try and set it up as close as we can to balanced. All right, we're at 0.197 inches of water column. And we're just going to go back, double check our supply side. 194. We're in good shape. So now what we have to do is go to the individual rooms and uh, go yeah. off of the design. Certain rooms have different airflow values and adjust them. And then once we do that, we'll come back <laughs> here <laughs> to see if we've messed up the total flow and if we need a little bit of tweaking. But this the first step is to get the right, you know, the right total amount of airflow and then go adjust the individual rooms. And then we'll go back and do that again. And then we'll go back and do this again. <laughs> and sometime tomorrow we'll be done. Just kidding. All right, so we've made some adjustments balancing this zone. It, this is a one ton ducted mini split. So the available static pressure is less than a conventional unit. And this particular ply is about 35 feet of six inch round flex duct and we have, we're at 92 CFM. So let me, just so we all heard that correctly, ducted mini split, 35 feet of flex, 92 CFM, and it's quiet. Every system, the process is slightly different. On these, they have 10 fan speeds, okay? So we have a target CFM. On this one ton unit, it's 300. Okay, so we're starting at the lowest fan speed. We're gonna go around, measure all the supply ducts, and then add that up and see where we're at. So that's kind of like the first step of air balancing is you wanna get the uh, fan speed set correctly. Every unit is a little bit different in that process, but then we will go around and measure all the uh, supplies. This is the ASIN flow finder powered flow hood, and if you see, we use supply registers with opposable blade dampers in them so we can make adjustments on the spot. So you just wanna get this thing kind of up to speed. Come around this way, Wes, so you can see. What it's doing now is it's compensating for the pressure drop. So it's trying to basically create a neutral pressure so the flow hood itself isn't opposing any resistance on the the uh, airflow, which, so we're measuring 71. So that's kind of where the accuracy, it comes from a, you know, a really nice manometer and the, the pressure, uh, the powered, what's the target? 75. Okay. All right, so both of my handometer and John's handometer have come up with a reading of 43 CFM. So let's, let's see how accurate, I mean, I have calibrated mine. It's been a little while since calibration. We're, we're guessing 43. Oh, jeez. It's got to gotta take it back to the shop. 28 to. <laughs> so this is one of the drawbacks of installing supplies in attics. I'm glad you got a good video. Is that hardwired or is it plug-in? Yeah, it goes, uh, we're good. <laughs> The initial round and our airflow is a little bit low of our target. So we're gonna, John's increasing the fan tap from zero to one. Then we'll go back around and measure again. And then hopefully that's it. Maybe one more time. Okay, so full disclosure, this is round three of going around and balancing. Steak was the first time we went around. Usually we'll find a zone or a room that has low airflow and we'll adjust the damper first. But yeah, we're back down to speed tap zero and we're at 304 CFM. Our target's 300, so we're gonna call that one good. We're here in the world's nicest crawl space. The only thing that could make it any better if it was higher, but it's uh, got a rat slab, it's, it's insulated, it's clean. It's uh, pretty much a pleasure to work in this. So I just wanted to show you the unit. This is the one unit we have set up for 400 CFM. This is a ducted mini split, 
and so we had about four and a half CFM of duct leakage. Part of some, some ways of doing that is you got to seal the cabinet, okay? You know, we have our filter up top. In theory, there's no real access to this. The, the coil goes like basically right here, fans here. So the fan is on the warm side, okay? So the fan doesn't really get any growth in it. The coil is pretty much inaccessible anyway. So we just go ahead and we tape it all up. If I have to get back in here at some point in time, you know, I, I do the electrical panel and foil tape. It's a little bit easier to, to deal with than the mastic tape. And then we tape up all these penetrations, you know, like even like on the copper, we tape it up and we try to squeeze every CFM of air out of it. Stretch tape is awesome. So look, I get five CFM total leakage and we use a canvas connector because of the way we make them. They pretty much don't leak at all. So pretty happy with how this turned out. Another cool thing, if you want to look down that way, that this duct right here is a six inch round, 35 feet of flex duct, and we're getting 90 CFM on a ducted mini split. So the, the way this system is laid out is we essentially have a plenum, we have a supply plenum, and then we have a whole bunch of flex ducts running off it. The trick is that the flex ducts are pulled tight. They're not turning. Wherever we make a turn, we use hard pipe, elbows, things like that. So we're able to take a ducted mini split and run a whole bunch of flex on it and deliver required airflow. Hopefully that gives you guys some confidence to run some flex. John, tell me a little bit about this high performance filter grill you have here. Yeah, so high performance filter grills, especially for new construction, this is our preference. Uh, so for this one ton, heat pump system we have a single central filter grill for the whole system this one's 20 by 20 and one of the keys is that it's a little bit oversized compared to typical practice and it's a two inch deep filter grill so that we can use a two inch deep merv 13 filter to get excellent filtration with really really low pressure drop so at 400 cfm the pressure drop across this filter is in the 0.05 to 0.06 inches of water column range so we've got that merv 13 filter We've got the filter grill itself is sealed to the ductwork, so we have zero bypass. So all of the air has to go through the filter. And we've got a gasket for the filter to rest against. So we want all of the air going through the filter and getting all the fine particles out, keeping our return duct clean, keeping our coil and blowers clean, keeping our supply duct clean, and we've got clean air going to the bedrooms. Okay, so we've got here Ream heat pump water heater. This is their newest model that's been out on the market for a couple of years now. Ultra efficient and much, much quieter than past models of heat pump water heaters. And what we're doing with this is we've got intake air comes in through the top, goes through a filter, and then discharge air comes out the back side or the side of this unit which i have not ducted yet we will finish that in just a little bit we're in a relatively small equipment room that's on the main floor of this house and so we're taking the discharge air and sending it down to the crawl space for good mixing of air in the crawl space and to keep this space warm and eliminate any comfort issues from that cool discharge air. So why do you specify a heat pump water heater? Heat pump water heater for best combination of efficiency, low cost of operation, and safety. Got it. And it helps dehumidify, which in central Virginia, we have the need for sure. Yeah, it's another little bit of icing on the cake. Big thanks to John and Neil for making this video. It's time consuming to make videos. It gets in the way of the project, but they do it honestly to be able to share with you so that you can get some ideas. I think they would be the first to tell you that it isn't necessarily that you need to do everything the way that they do it, but seeing the way that other people do it is really helpful. We've learned a lot from John and Neil over the years, and I can't thank those guys enough. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.